Dreams Amid the Sands, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, where do I even begin with Lawrence of Arabia, the cinematic equivalent of a long, sand-choked trek in the desert? Ah yes, it's the film that transformed the epic vistas of the Middle East into a broiling sandbox of excruciatingly slow plot progression and exorbitant runtime. David Lean's 1962 masterpiece, or so they say, is the equivalent of a Dickens novel on the screen, not because it's a classic, but because it's overly long and you start wondering if Lean was paid by the hour. With a runtime that stretches over three hours, it's a true test of human endurance. In fact, I propose that instead of marathons, athletes should just be made to sit through Lawrence of Arabia. Anyone who makes it to the end without falling asleep deserves a gold medal. Peter O'Toole plays T. Lawrence, a British officer who unites feuding Arab tribes and helps them fight against the Turks during World War I. O'Toole's performance is a masterclass in looking puzzled and befuddled throughout the entire film. The man spends three hours squinting at the sun and talking in riddles. He's like a desert-themed sphinx, except even the sphinx probably had more facial expressions. And let's not forget about the supporting cast, who seem to exist solely to marvel at Lawrence's brilliance. Omar Sharif, as Sharif Ali, spends most of his screen time gazing at Lawrence with a mixture of awe and confusion, mirroring the audience's own feelings. I half expected him to break the fourth wall and ask us, do you get what's going on here? Because I sure don't. The film is visually stunning, I'll give it that. But much like a mirage in the desert, it's all a beautiful illusion with no substance. Lean seems to have confused epic with long. He treats us to endless scenes of sand dunes, camels and more sand dunes. It's like a holiday slideshow from your most boring relative who went on a Sahara desert tour and insists on showing you every single photo. The music, oh the music. Maurice Jarry's score is a relentless auditory assault. It repeats the same droning theme until you're begging for mercy. It's the kind of music that would make a camel wish for a set of noise-canceling headphones. The film's portrayal of the Middle East is also laughably simplistic. It's a Westerner's romanticized fantasy of the region, complete with mystical tribesmen, noble savages and of course more sand. The cultural nuances are as shallow as a kiddie pool in a heat wave, and the politics are glossed over like a term paper written the night before it's due. I believe Lean intended Lawrence of Arabia to be a profound exploration of a complex historical figure against the backdrop of a volatile region. Instead, it comes off as an exercise in overblown grandeur and self-indulgence. It's like a camel ride, slow, uncomfortable, and you're just relieved when it's over. In conclusion, if you're looking for an authentic portrayal of the Middle East during World War I, or a nuanced character study of T.E. Lawrence, perhaps it's best to look elsewhere. But if you need a surefire way to cure your insomnia, Lawrence of Arabia might just be the perfect film for you. It's a cinematic sedative, a celluloid sleeping pill, a silver screen snooze fest. Remember to keep a pillow handy, you're going to need it.